in a recent video, I came on this channel and, you know, tried to wrap my brain around how wrestling got so lame today. And, you know, a lot of different thoughts as to how that could have happened, at least from my perspective. Now, you know, not to beat the dead horse, but the WWE product currently is not good. I don't care the few outliers that sit there and want to talk about how good the product is. If they choose to enjoy it, that's fine. But in general, it's just not good. If it was better, more people would watch. And it's just that simple. If the product was better, it was more interesting, more compelling, more entertainment, more people would watch. Flat out. Uh, but, you know, I sit there and I try to look within too, and I try to figure out kind of how I, how I got to this point. And, you know, I look at professional wrestling, and I know some of you will talk about how uh, somebody like me, being an older fan, is stuck back in the time frame of the Attitude Era, or especially for somebody like me, stuck back in the 80s. And I think there's something to be said about that, because this carries across all forms of sports and entertainment, is that sometimes absence can make the heart grow fonder, and the more time goes by, you start to remember uh, the flashes and more of the highlights and the big spots, the big moments. Those are what really stand out. And you kind of yearn for that. And sometimes over the passage of enough time, you can sometimes even trick yourself into thinking that things were a lot better than maybe they actually were. Or it harkens back to your youth. It comes back into the whole thing of fearing your own mortality or thinking about how much life has passed you by and where is your life going from there. It's the certainty of the past versus the uncertainty of the future. And I do think there's something to be said about that. And sometimes we have to be careful to not just get stuck in the moment of the past was always better and the present always stinks and God only knows what's coming in the future. You see that a lot in sports especially. You know, that you he always hear about the the Jim Browns of the world and how great they were and how all of the running backs that came afterwards with certain exceptions they suck they don't measure up and da 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 da. Now Jim Brown was a great player. He was a great fullback. He's the arguably the greatest fullback of all time. You know, but he. If you actually understood what Jim Brown was as a player, you're talking about a big dude with speed at 225 pounds, the size of a big physical running back today. Back then, that was the size of offensive and defensive linemen. You know, occasionally, you'd have the big defensive linemen, the 240, 250-pound type of dude. You'd have the big outlier like a big Doug Atkins, all six foot eight, 270 pounds of him. But, but those guys are common in today's game. Back then, they were the exception to the rule. So you look at somebody, let's say, in a modern context like an Adrian Peterson, who has put together arguably his own Hall of Fame career, how much more dominant could he have been back then? And just because he plays in the modern game, does that mean that he doesn't necessarily measure up to Jim Brown? Eh, maybe, maybe not. But again, it comes down to this whole thing of remembering certain things, and again, with the Jim Brown example, he was an adequate pass catcher, but he wasn't great. He was not a very willing blocker whatsoever. He would just kind of turn his shoulder into somebody. So he really wasn't truly a complete football player. What he did, he did incredibly well, about as well as anybody in the history of the game. But when you look at the entire context, you have uh, my parents and grandparents' generation might look at Jim Brown one way because they were able to be caught up in the time and in the moments. They were able to see it live where I was not. But sometimes they forget the full context of who Jim Brown was, the type of player he was, and also the era that he was in, and some of the luxuries that that afforded him. Imagine today if you had a 320-pound running back that ran a 40 in the 4-4s. Four Probably run for 3,000 yards a season. When you think back to those time frame of the 50s and 60s, that was the equivalent kind of what Jim Brown was doing. Now, a lot of the offensive and defensive linemen were no bigger than Jim Brown, and many of them were smaller than Jim Brown. And you go watch the old footage, and you'll see that's the case. So how dominant would an Adrian Peterson be, just as one example, or you could say a Le'Veon Bell, or you know whoever the case might be, David Johnson, You know how successful would they be if the linemen today were still 225 pounds, or if they went back in time 
at their current size, or if in today's game they were six foot seven, three hundred twenty pounds, and could run like they can. You know, and it just comes down to the whole thing of thinking about the past is automatically always better than everything else. But then sometimes the past was better than the present, and. We all, we all know the 80s WWF, even if that wasn't your flavor, you had the Crockett Territories in the early 80s. You had world-class championship wrestling. You had the AWA. There was lots of great wrestling to be found, even if WWF, the Northeast product, wasn't exactly your flavor. And flat out, that product was far superior, even with its flaws, than anything else that you get today. You had unique and interesting characters. You had kayfabe still in play, so the characters were the characters 24-7, 365. When guys would get hurt in storyline, they would actually sell that story. There would be consequences to things. There was a clear hierarchy in the card. You would have heel commentators trying to get the heels over. You would have face commentators trying to get the heels and the faces over. You know, just so many different things. But it was better. And the same thing with the Attitude Era, because it really matched the culture of the time. And, you know, it was an interesting time in this country. And ultimately, professional wrestling with WWF and ECW and WCW ended up mirroring the times and matching the times and in some ways setting the pop culture for that time frame. But when you look at today, you know, maybe it's just more so that it's not just that the WWE sucks, it's that everything else got shitty too. Maybe the WWE is really not that much different compared to everybody else, it's just everything else got that much worse. Like I look at it from a wrestling standpoint. I mean, the WWE, you know, very few guys can actually cut an interview to save their damn lives. You'll sit there and have somebody get absolutely destroyed in the match, and the next night they come out, and there's not a bruise, there's not a scratch, there's not a cut, there's not a bandage, there's no limp, there's no uh, skip in their gait, there's nothing to indicate that there was a problem or that they just got the holy hell beat out of them the night before. Again, if there's no consequence for the action, why would anybody care? You just think about this type of stuff, and you, you sit there and see how all the characters kind of have become the same, and all the stories have kind of come the same, and you, you don't really take a lot of chances. You tend to play it very safe. And the WWE has become, in a lot of ways, its corporate reality through its product. And what I mean by that is that the product has become a very corporate product, where everything kind of is the same, nobody outshines the machine, and when anything goes well, it's always the machines doing. When anything goes bad, it's everybody else's problem but the leaders in the top of the organization. You, know, you watch the WWE now, and you go back and watch something from the 80s. You go back and watch something from the 90s, and even to a lesser degree, something from the early 2000s. And you see a clear, stark difference in the presentation. And it's not just bad because it's a different type of presentation, it's bad because of what that presentation is and the type of presentation that it is. You watch it and you feel like you are watching a, a corporate product. And a lot of people work for corporations. A lot of people resent the corporations that they work for in a lot of ways. Don't like what those corporations represent. So when they turn on the WWE, probably the last thing they want to see is in a lot of ways the representation of corporate America in their wrestling product. And in a lot of ways, that's exactly what they get. Because you get corporations that get too stretched out, and they get too caught up in other things other than their core competency areas, and that's certainly been a knock on the WWE that I've had for the past almost two decades now. But you look at other areas, too, and I look at sports, and I think of the NFL. I mean, I could think of 15, 20 years ago. I lived for every NFL game. I couldn't get enough NFL action. And I would die to be able to watch people like Jerry Rice and Barry Sanders and Brett Favre and Dan Marino and John Elway and Reggie White and Bruce Smith, Lawrence Taylor, you know, throughout the 80s and the 90s, you know, guys like the Joe Montanas of the world and so on and so forth. So many great players in the NFL and great teams that I've been fortunate to watch over the years. But I sit there and I watch the NFL now. And I sit there, and sure, you've got big stars. And I can still appreciate 
great players like the Antonio Browns, the Odell Beckham Juniors, the Le'Veon Bills, the David Johnsons of the world, the Tom Brady's of the world, the Aaron Rodgers of the world, and so on and so forth. But even now, those stars, just for some reason, don't measure up the same to me as the stars of the past. Like a Ladanian Tomlinson, great player, Hall of Famer, but he wasn't Barry Sanders. You know, you look at receivers like, I mentioned Antonio Brown, great player, arguably best wide receiver in the National Football League. Now, this might be like an unfair comparison, but he's most certainly no Jerry Rice. He's most certainly no Randy Moss. He's not even, to me, a Sterling Sharp. There's a name from the past. And I wonder sometimes if that's just the perspective changing for myself as I get older and life priorities change, or if it's just the fact that the product just isn't as good. And you look at the NFL in a lot of ways, it's gotten very corporate in the way it does things too. It's like they intentionally set out to suck all of the fun out of the damn game. Like when we get to the point where we have to legislate touchdown celebrations to the point where somebody jumps in a Salvation Army tea kettle and we're giving them a 15-yard flag, we have to question what the priorities are. In a league that's seeing some of some of its ratings dip this year, is that the most important thing you want to do? Is take any and all fun out of the game? Like you think back to the days of LT would come flying into the quarterback from the blind side. He would destroy a Jaworski or a Ken O'Brien or whoever the hell he was facing at the time. And he would sit there and he'd get up and talk shit af to him afterwards. And then you move on to the next fucking play. Now, if a Lawrence Taylor played, he'd probably get kicked out of half of the goddamn games because he'd get two unsportsmanlike penalties in the first quarter because he'd be too busy talking shit to quarterbacks and offensive linemen talking about how they got to do better than that son. You know, I look at the NBA, and in particular, playoff basketball especially. Now, the NBA product to me has gotten better over the past decade. You know, Post-Jordan to about 2005, 2006, the league was the shits. The absolute shits. It has gotten better now. But it still has those things that I just really, really dislike strongly. The lack of quality big men in the league. Everybody wants to be a fucking guard, whether they're five foot eight or seven foot four. That's just ridiculous. There's a lack of clearly defined hierarchies of roles. Everybody wants to do the same damn thing. Furthermore, you got this whole mentality of LeBron wants to go with Bosch down to Wade's team in South Beach. Kevin Durant wants to tuck his tail up his ass and go to Golden State. I can't beat him, so I'm going to join him because I'm a pussy. You know, I think about that, and I watch the playoffs, and I think back in the day of when you had Bill Lambeer sitting there and getting under everybody's go, and he'd get in Michael Jordan's face, and Jordan would fucking swing at him, and maybe there'd be a technical call. Maybe there fucking even wouldn't be. And then the guys would stay in the game, and they'd be there. Bill Lambeer and Larry Bird going to blows. Freaking Robert Parrish two games later in the 87 Eastern Conference Finals in Game 5 sitting there throwing sissy haymakers over the top of Lambeer. And Lambeer's asking afterwards you get thrown out of the game and you play fucking on. Now as a result of the Malice in the Palace and all this other crap, you know, you basically don't get those brawls in the NBA anymore. And while that sounds kind of morbid to say, I look forward to those fights, you know, when you're talking about the playoffs, there's a clear lack of physicality in playoff basketball. And it feels like it just isn't as important, that it just doesn't matter as much. And if you get to that point, you tend just to not care as much. I miss those days when you have those great players on those great teams, and it literally felt like you were watching a battle. It felt like you were watching a war play out over a five- or seven-game series. Now, it doesn't mean in the NBA's case, that everything is bad because it's not. But there are some things that are different from the past, and it's just not as good. Everybody wants to shoot, but most people in the league can't freaking shoot. You know, we don't enforce the rules. There's so many things. And I just look at the NBA, and I say, it's clearly not as good as it used to be. Part of that may be from my perspective, being a kid versus an older man in his 30s now. And some of that is just the fact that it's just not as good. You know, it, again, the NBA, talk about what's best for me and the lack of loyalty and everything else and everybody out for the bottom dollar. 
you know, and trying to take the easy way out in a lot of ways, again, mirrors corporate America. And then you look at TV and entertainment in general. When you had reality shows like, you know, in a lot of ways, the Jerry Springer show. And then you had Survivor and then Big Brother and then all these other reality type shows, all this scripted, fake, real bullshit started to come into play. We lost a lot of creativity in the television and movie industry. It's why a lot of the big blockbuster movies now are based off of comic book characters that were created 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 goddamn years ago. Because we just try to rest on the laurels of the past and try to capitalize on the past because we've been so desensitized to so many things and at the same point in time, we've just lost that desire and willingness to push the envelope and do new and creative shit. We got lazy as a society. The WWE has gotten lazy. In a lot of ways, the NFL got lazy and kind of rested on its laurels and made a far inferior product. The NBA in some ways rested on its laurels. They were a little bit more progressive with things and they've improved their product some. But it's never fully recovered from the levels of where it was, I felt, in the mid-90s. And there were a lot of factors at play. But you look at television now, and it's keeping up with the slut bags and real gold diggers of Whore County and all this other bullshit. And we, we sit there and we prop these people up. And our media sits there and t gives us multiple stories every day about this slut's Instagram being hacked, or this douchebag doing this, or this whack ass doing that. And, and we sit there and we look, and you know, it's just a sad indictment, I think, on our society today in general, that this is what the fuck we get. So, while I sit there sometimes and I blast the WWE, and I blast professional wrestling as a whole, as I should, because they deserve it, I have to take a step back and remember, too, that some of that is just upon me based off of my evolution as a person, my changes over the years, the fact that I've gotten older, my perspectives have changed, most certainly have, you know, and the fact that other things just aren't as good as they used to. Like, you look at it from a wrestling standpoint. If you do one thing, let's say you do something where you have a flamboyantly K character, then you're going to have Glad get all butthurt. Bad pun, but you get the point. You're going to get all pissed off. You know, if you sit there and do something with an animal, then Pete is not going to be fucking happy. If you sit there and do an angle where somebody spits on the flag or burns the fucking flag, then you're going to have a bunch of fucking right-wing whack jobs getting all pissy about this. If you do this, you're going to get a bunch of pink Okami left fuckers sitting there getting all angry about this. It's not exactly the best environment to do a lot of interesting stuff. That goes for television, that most certainly goes for professional wrestling. But when you look at what's out there, you know, and that's why every once in a while you get that blip on the radar, that scripted show that really, really captures everybody's attention, the Breaking Bads and the Walking Deads and the Game of Thrones and the so on and so forth back a few years ago, Sopranos. You know, maybe they're all good shows, and they probably all are, but is it that they were really good shows and that's why people cared so much? Or was it the fact that they were okay shows, but they looked great compared to all the other shit that was out there? And they got artificially propped up as such. Because again, you can keep up with the slut bags. You can sit there and watch the real whores of Gold Digger County. You can watch out, my, my girlfriend's got a vagina and a penis. And I put it in her butt. <laughs> Who should I choose? I mean, it's just awful. Just awful. You can see why so many people want to cut the cable. It's not about cost. It's about the fact that they don't like the shit that's out there. Why should they feel like they have to pay for cable or satellite when most of the shit they don't want, most of the shit they don't like, most of the shit they hate? And again, you see where corporate America has come into your media as well because now the corporations are trying to sit there and sell you on how good this is and how entertaining this is and how this is the new norm this is the new standard of entertainment and you just kind of throw up your hands with that shit and if you don't you're one of the sheep that gets sucked into this crap and it's a shame so yeah WWE is not good and it does suck and the products terrible and wrestling is terrible
But honestly, at the end of the day, you know, it could just be me. But I think it's more than just me. What else out there is really better than what it used to be? The NFL most certainly isn't. NBA most certainly isn't. Baseball, good God almighty, isn't nearly as good as it used to be 20 or 30 years ago. Maybe hockey? That might be the one thing, and frankly, a lot of people in this country don't give a shit about hockey. So out of the four major sports, the one that's probably the best it's been in a long time, people don't care about. Track and field isn't nearly as important in this country as it used to be. It sucks, even though the athletes are better than they ever have been. You know, but you think about it, and we think back to all those TV shows with great theme songs and all these TV shows with great memorable classic characters, and there's so few of them today. You know, everything sucks. Hate to be that dude, the old bitter white man. And that's probably what I sound like here, but I don't feel like I'm off base. So while WWE isn't good, if anything, I'll give them credit for one thing. They're matching pop culture. They're matching the society of the day. Because as all this other stuff is overscripted, watered-down bullshit. That's what it is. That includes your sports, too, people. It's overly scripted, watered-down bullshit. No wonder I'm so frustrated. Because the WWE is just like all these TV shows that I don't fucking watch anymore. And it's just like a lot of these sports leagues that I continue to distance myself from more and more and it breaks my heart. It just can't be that hard to be better. But anybody with the ability to do something about it doesn't really care. They get just enough money to get by, just enough power to matter, and that's all they care about. So I probably shouldn't hope for anything to get better anytime soon. I'm most certainly not holding my breath that it's going to get much better with WWE.